If you've ever programmed before, you've probably heard of the Boolean logic operator OR. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to OR upgraded, exclusive OR, aka ZOR. We're going to explore this operator's use in cryptography. ZOR is an operator that takes in two Boolean values, which could be true, false, or if we're talking about computers, one and zero. It checks if one of the values is true, but not both. In research and in mathematics, you'll typically see ZOR as this symbol. And in programming languages, it's usually the caret symbol. So if I ZOR 1 and 0, I'll get 1. 1 ZOR 1 is 0. And of course, 0 ZOR 0 is 0. OK, we can ZOR 1s and zeros together. But how is that going to help us? Well, it turns out that we can ZOR practically anything. We just have to represent it as ones and zeros. Let's say I want to ZOR the two numbers 25 and 63. We can represent these numbers in binary and ZOR each corresponding bit together. This is called bitwise ZOR. We can also do this with characters and even strings as both can be represented as binary. ZOR is special for many reasons, but one is its use in cryptography. Using this single inexpensive operation, we can both encrypt and decrypt a message. Let me show an encryption operation known as a one-time pad. Let's say we have some message we want to encrypt. In cryptography, this is called plain text. We can represent this message in binary. If we generate a random key equal to the size of the binary message, we can ZOR the two to produce an encrypted message called a ciphertext. We then can send the ciphertext to a recipient. In order to decrypt the message, the recipient needs the key beforehand. Then they can ZOR the ciphertext with the key to obtain the original plain text. This is secure because if the hacker sees the ciphertext, they will never be able to know the plain text without knowing the key. If one of the ciphertext bits is zero, then either the key bit is one and the plain text bit is one or the key bit zero and the plain text bit is zero. But both options are equally probable, which makes the system perfectly secure. The one-time pad crypto system has rules and if we don't abide to them, vulnerabilities will occur. The rules are one, the key used in the encryption process must be truly random, and two, the key can only be used once. This means you can't use the same key to encrypt two messages. Let's see how we make attacks on one-time pads that reuse keys for messages. Given two messages zored by the same key, the hacker can zor the two ciphertexts together, which is equivalent to zoring the plain text. I encourage you to do some math to see how this is true. And although you cannot extract the original plain text without knowing one of them, the ZOR of two plain texts can still provide information about the original messages. Let's take a look at this code I wrote that encrypts two images using a one-time pad with this same key. ZORing the two encrypted images together and converting it back into an image results in some plain text information coming through. Still, this attack only works best with visual messages. Another attack based on reused keys is called crib dragging. This involves guessing parts of a message to uncover parts of other messages. If two messages were encrypted with the same key and we know part of the first message, then we will know part of the key. And we can use that part of the key to unlock a section of the other message. This works especially well if we know the messages in English or even another text format like HTML. Then we can look for commonly used words like the and h1. If we keep finding matches, we can uncover all the messages encrypted with that key. This process is usually automated as messages can be long. If implemented correctly, one-time pads are a very strong crypto system. However, they aren't the solution to secure information transfer. Some of the disadvantages are that the key must be as large as the message we want to send. And then we also have to distribute that potentially massive key to all the recipients of our message. If we want to communicate with everyone on the internet, then all of them would have to have our key and we would have to have everyone else's. 
The one-time pad is a crypto system that guarantees security, but it isn't the answer to the toughest challenges facing modern cryptography. I'm Alexa, and I created this video to summarize the first few chapters of the open source book Crypto 101, which I've linked in the description. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.